mommies, my name is Lai and you're watching How to Mommy. In this video, I will share ko sa inyo yung 10 things that I wish I knew before I started breastfeeding. Para din siyang 10 things that nobody told me about breastfeeding or 10 things that nobody warned me about breastfeeding. Something like that. If you are a breastfeeding mom, I hope makaka-relate kayo. Or if you are still pregnant and you are planning to breastfeed, sana panoorin nyo until the end because I will share very important things and this is exactly Para siyang video na sana pinanood ko dati. Pero of course, this is myself learning a lot of things after 20 months of breastfeeding. 20 months of breastfeeding and ongoing. So, marami talaga akong na-learn. And if I could talk to my pregnant self before, sana... I wish sinabihan ko yung self ko about all of these things that I learned. So, let's start with um, something that I did not know or hindi ko fully na realize before. Number one is, breastfeeding is not only for the poor. Ganun kasi yun dati, especially during my time. Pinanganak ako in the year 1992. At that time, formula milk was booming. Everybody was trying to buy formula milk instead of breastfeeding. Usong-uso yung formula milk na parang naiisip talaga ng tao na kasi mahal yung formula milk eh. Hanggang ngayon, mahal siya. So, naiisip ng tao na kapag Mahirap ka, breastfeed ka. You have to breastfeed your baby. You have to stay at home and breastfeed your baby. Pero kapag mayaman ka, ay swerte ka, pwede kang bumili ng formula milk. And then you can just formula feed your baby. But right now, that's not true anymore. Breastfeeding is not only for the poor. In fact, even the richest families try to breastfeed. Celebrities try to breastfeed. Business women try to breastfeed. Yung mga may trabaho, kahit mataas na yung rank nila sa work, they don't work anymore para lang makapag-breastfeed sila or they pump at work para lang makapag-breastfeed sila. So nowadays, breastfeeding is not for the poor but breastfeeding is for all. Parang takot na nga bumili ng formula milk yung mga mayayaman. Like even if they are very very rich, Yung ginawa nga nila is, bumili sila ng freezer para lang makapag-store ng frozen breast milk. Ganun na yung lumilevel up na yung breastfeeding at this day and age. Number two, nobody warned me about this but breastfeeding is going to be an emotional decision. When you decide that you want to breastfeed and then you start breastfeeding, tuloy-tuloy na yun. As in talaga. I did not know it. Alam ko kasi nababasa ko yun eh online, mga, nag, mga mommies na nagpo-post on the social media about their breastfeeding journey. Especially when their toddlers start to wean. Weaning is kapag ayaw nang mag-breastfeed ng toddler nyo. It is a very emotional journey pala talaga. The whole breastfeeding from start to finish. So, hindi ko alam yun. Although nababasa ko, hindi ko siya fully na-understand. But the slightest and parang naiyak akong isipin nangyari. Actually, naiyak ako when it happened was when Cairo was very, very, Cairo is my baby, and when Cairo was very, very underweight, tapos wala talaga akong may offer na milk, and at that time, wala pa akong um, donor, wala pa kaming breast milk donor at that time, we had to give him formula milk, and ang sakit-sakit talaga, as in, hindi ko siya matignan. The nurse was the one who gave the milk, and then, my husband or my mother-in-law, somebody, parang iba, yung, yung mama ko or yung papa ko yung nagbigay ng milk, hindi ko masyadong maalala, but somebody else cup-fed my baby formula milk and naiyak ako, ayoko, hindi ko na, hindi ko matingnan. It happened several times, probably twice or thrice when he was only one week old. Tapos, tinatry ko siyang i-breastfeed in between. Pero kapag iyak siya ng iyak, tinatry nilang bigyan ng formula milk through the cup. And naiiyak talaga ako. As in, hindi ko matingnan. Ang sakit, sakit, sakit talaga. When I am able to get out of the room, I get out of the room whenever we give him formula milk. Yung pinapabigay ko is yung husband ko. Because it's a very emotional thing for me na parang, parang nasasabi ko sa self ko na nagkukulang ka as a mom. Hindi mo na ibigay yung milk na kailangan mo ibigay sa anak mo. Ayan, umiinom na tuloy siya ng formula milk. So yun yung closest, um, closest experience ko sa pagiging emotional about breastfeeding. And thankfully, Cairo is not showing signs of weaning yet. So I'm not sure kung ano mangyayari sa akin when Cairo... Weans, sabi na ibang moms para daw siyang 
heartbreak. Para siyang hiniwala yan ka ng boyfriend. But I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. But so far, I'm very happy with our breastfeeding journey. And wala pa kasi akong plans mag-wean. Um, probably when I get pregnant. And so far, wala pa din kaming plans of getting pregnant this year. So, yun. But yes, that is something that nobody warned me about. Breastfeeding is going to be a very emotional journey. Number three is something that nobody ever told me. And that is, breastfeeding might not be easy. And I'm not trying to scare you. Please do not be scared because I'm telling you, hindi kayo magsisisi when you start breastfeeding. But I'm just saying that I did not know na hindi pala siya ganun kadali. For some, it is more convenient, but for some, it is a hassle. Generally, it's supposed to be easy. Wala sarang problema, di ba? Kapag iiyak si baby, just offer your dede, tapos kapag tapos na siya, and then okay na. Pero hindi pala yung ganang kadali. There are problems such as low milk supply, which is very common. Hindi pala all the time na enough yung milk mo para kay baby. Supposedly, wala sanang problema, di ba? Kapag iiyak si baby, just offer your dede, tapos if aalis kayo, Wala kang kailangang bitbitin, wala kang kailangang dalhin na bottles, milk. Pag uwi mo sa bahay, wala kang kailangan i-wash na bottles, wala kang kailangang i-sterilize. At night, kapag tulog na kayo, tapos nagising si baby and gusto niya yung dumede, it's just there. Hindi mo na kailangan bumangon, pumunta ka sa kusina, kumuha ng bottle, magmix ng milk. You don't have to do that. So generally, it's supposed to be more... Um, easier sana yung breastfeeding kesa sa formula feeding. But I did not know, little did I know na hindi pala siya ganun ka-easy. Meron din pala mga problems na encounter ang mga breastfeeding moms. And this is not to scare you, but bigyan ko lang kayo ng idea that there is such a thing as low milk supply. There is such a thing as inverted nipples. Hindi nahahanap ni baby or hindi siya nakaka-dede kasi pabaliktad yung nipple ng mama. Meron ding Lip tie, tongue tie, it's more difficult for baby to breastfeed kapag ganun. Madami, madaming iba't ibang problems. And these are things that I wish I knew para makapag-prepare ako. Pero thankfully naman na uh, hindi naman ako ganun kalit when I started researching. When Cairo was around 2 or 3 weeks old, dun ko pa lang nalaman yung mga problems na to. And because of Google, Facebook, social media na mga information, okay naman siya. Just always try to research. Kasi breastfeeding might not always be easy, pero nagagawa naman ng palaan. Number 4, nobody told me about breastfeeding is that it's not always free. Yung naisip natin lagi is free yung breastfeeding, ba? Hindi mo na kailangang bumili ng gatas para mag-breastfeed. And it is true, right now I am enjoying it, that wala talaga akong kailangang bilhin for Cairo. Only diapers, sabon, pagkain, ganun. Pero about milk, I don't have to worry about that kasi he will just drink milk from me. Pero yung totoo, 0 to 6 months, breastfeeding was not free for us. Bakit? Kasi low milk supply ako. So, I had to buy a pump. Yung pump is mahal yun. Kasi yung binili ko is electric pump. So, mahal yun. Pump, bottles, storage bottles. Binili ko yung lahat. Pumping bra. Yung mga nursing blouse. Nursing, alam mo yun, yung mga damit na mas madali mag-breastfeed. Binili ko yun. Um, nursing cover. Yung kapag ganito yung damit nyo, di ba na-expose kayo, so you wear a cover. Binibili din yun. Nursing pillow. So, madami din palang dapat bilhin kapag nagbe-breastfeed ka, depending on your situation. Normally, dati, mga lola natin, ganun, um, they will just stay at home naman, and they don't need to pump. For some reason, ang gagaling nila, hindi nila kinailangan mag-pump. Wala sila masyadong problems about breastfeeding. So, they were just at home, tapos parang, Nandun lang sila sa bahay, they didn't have to buy a lot of things. Pero ako, I go to the office, pumupunta ako ganito, ganyan, pumupunta tayo ng pediatrician. So, dapat meron tayo ng mga cooler, kung nagdadala tayo ng milk, ba? Ang dami natin kailangan bilhin din if breastfeeding moms tayo. Pero, that is depending on each situation. Of course, kapag stay-at-home mom, mas konti yung kailangan yung bilhin or dalhin. Especially if enough yung milk nyo, hindi nyo kailangan mag-pump, wala talaga kayong kailangang bilhin. But just a heads up, breastfeeding is not always for free. It could be free and it could also be expensive. So it's up to you. And that's just something that I'd like to inform you. Parang ako kasi hindi ko alam. So now you know. Ganan.
Number five on my list that nobody warned me about breastfeeding is that you might lose all of your free time. As in, wala ka na free time even for yourself. It is actually true that if your baby is a breastfeeding baby, mas clingy siya sa'yo. Hindi ko, I will not sugarcoat it, but totoo talaga siya. Kesa sa formula-fed babies, more, a lot of formula-fed babies, lumalapit kahit kanino and kahit kahit sino pwedeng mag-feed, 'di ba? Pwedeng yung mama mo, papa mo ganun. Pero if breastfed yung baby niyo, sanay na sanay sa dede, uh, especially if direct latch, ikaw talaga yung hanap-hanap the whole day. So, yan yung nangyari sa akin. Si Cairo, hindi lumalapit kahit kanino. Mahirap siyang iwan sa ibang tao. Mahirap siyang patulugin kung wala ako. Even, Even up to now, dumedede pa din siya hanggang sa makatulog. So, Kahit nap time niya, nakagano'n ako or nakasidelying kami. And he's already 20 months old. So that is true. You will lose all of your free time. Especially when he was 0 to 6 months. Wala akong time mag -ayos. So whenever I get invites na, Uy, let's go out. Uy, let's do this. Let's do that. Nagagawa ko naman. Pero I will choose not to do it. Kasi it's so stressful to bring baby with you, to make sure that my my breastfeeding area, to make sure that it is an, a, a nice area to breastfeed, it's it, it's private or something. Yung, yung parang ganun, alam nyo yun. That's why madami ako mga nursing or yung mga breastfeeding blouses kasi I always want to be comfortable whenever Cairo asks for milk. Alam nyo yun, yung anywhere na iiyak siya, mabibigay ko talaga yung gusto niya which is dede. So, that was the reason why I lost all of my free time. Na parang ayoko na tuloy lumabas. Ayoko na munang gumawa ng ganito, ganyan. And then, kapag umiiyak siya, hindi ako makapag-edit ng video kasi balik na naman ako sa kanya. Hindi ako makapag-film ng video kasi kailangan daladala ko siya, kailangan nakadede siya, ganun. And there are really times, especially teething, na gusto ng mga babies natin na nakadede lang, na dumedede lang sila the whole day. So, that's it. You might lose all of your free time. Number six on my list that nobody warned me about breastfeeding is that it's not always comfortable. By the way, if you're wondering, bakit ba ang dami mong hindi alam about breastfeeding? The reason is because my mother-in-law, sandali lang niyang binreastfeed yung si Carlo. And my mom, hindi niya kami binreastfeed, only yung pinakabunso namin. So, we, he, they didn't really have an extended period of breastfeeding. Hindi, hindi sila nakapag-train na mag-breastfeed straight for one year, for two years. So, they weren't able to share with me a lot of things about breastfeeding. And that's not their fault. In fact, iba kasi, iba-iba yung generations. And this generation kasi, where I belong, and I am also a nurse, um, ito kasi yung generation na parang dinidiin nila yung benefits of breastfeeding. That's why nadala ko and now I am a breastfeeding mom. So, this is the reason why heavy research ako, ang dami kong gustong matutunan, and this time, ang dami kong gustong ituro sa inyo. And once again, the number six on my list about something that nobody warned me about breastfeeding is that it's not always comfortable. As in talaga, physically, my body is parang Oh my god, talaga ang hirap mag breastfeed. Hindi yung ano ha, hindi yung naiisip natin, yung first na mahirap talaga is kapag kinakagat tayo and nasusugatan yung dede natin. That's not the only problem. Yes, that is a problem. Na nararanasan ko 'yon, yung may sugat ako kasi nahihirapan si Cairo, hindi hindi magaling maglatch si Cairo or when he was teething tapos kinakagat niya yes naranasan ko yun pero aside from that i'm telling you ang sakit sakit sa katawan especially because sinanay ko siyang mag co-sleep so co-sleeping is naka sideline kami tapos dumedede siya habang natutulog nag unlatch lang siya kapag tulog na tulog na talaga siya so hindi pwede na akong hindi mag sideline but most of the time naka sideline kami ang sakit sa katawan yung dito oh as in talaga ang sakit sa shoulder imagine kapag sanay kang naka-flat ka lang sa bed, tapos suddenly may anak ka na na gustong dumede all the time. So now you have to lie down side-lying for a very long period of time every night. So yun, ang sakit, ang sakit sa katawan. And when you are also breastfeeding, kahit nakaupo ka, tapos nakaganyan ka kasi dumedede nga si baby habang nagnanap siya. It's a very uncomfortable position, especially sa likod. 
As in talaga, ang sakit. Ang sakit niya sa arms, ang sakit niya sa back, ang sakit niya sa... It also takes a toll on your body. And this is to warn you then and for you to do enough research na meron din akong kakilala ng mami na tatlo na yung anak niya, she breastfed all of her three children. And now she has problems with her teeth because nauubos na yung calcium niya sa body. So you have to be careful about your calcium intake kasi... Um, you have to take care of your body then while you are breastfeeding. Kasi sinishare mo yung nutrients mo sa baby mo. So you have to have enough. And then the baby has to have enough. So take care of your body. Just like the example I just said na may, may problem siya sa teeth niya. Kasi nauubos na pala yung calcium niya sa body niya. So physically, about your body, you also have to take care of yourself. Because it's not always going to be physically comfortable for you. To breastfeed. Number seven is something that I already knew but it is something that I just want to share because it might be something that you do not know before you will start breastfeeding. And this is very important. Number seven on my list is breastfeeding is extremely, extremely beneficial. Of all the decisions I made about um, being a mom to Cairo, yung pinaka first decision na sinabi ko, I want to breastfeed him. Tapos, I insisted talaga on breastfeeding him. Yun talaga yung, yung pinaka no regrets. I'm very happy that I made the decision. Why? Did you know that kapag nagkakasakit ka, or your toddler or your baby is exposed to viruses and germs, your breast milk will help your baby. Nag-iiba siya. Of course, yung formula milk, that's it. Formula milk is yan na talaga yun until the end. Pero yung milk natin, nag-iiba siya. For example, na-expose si baby sa isang bata na may sipon. Kapag dumedede na siya sa'yo after the exposure, nag-iiba yung milk mo. Chine-change niya yung properties niya to protect your baby para hindi siya mahawa or para ma-fight niya yung sipon na virus na na-exposed kasi nga na-exposed siya kanina sa kalaro niya. So that's how amazing our breast milk is. In fact, there was a time na nagka-fever ako, 39 degrees Celsius, that's a very high fever. Kasi hindi ako nagkaka-high fever, but that time, sobrang taas ng lagnat ko. I breastfed Cairo. Hindi ako nag-stop. As in talaga, I did not pump my milk. I did not throw my milk. I did not give him formula milk. I did not... Hindi ako nag-stop. Direct latch talaga. Ang init-init ko. Uminom ko ng paracetamol. Tapos direct latch kami. Hindi siya nahawa. As in talaga, dun ko talaga parang naisip na, wow, breast feeding is really amazing. Kasi yung ginawa ng milk ko is nag-change siya ng properties para hindi mahawa si Cairo sa lagnat ko. And ako ha, ako mismo yung may lagnat. And that's a lot of times na na-prove ko. Although si Cairo, nahahawa pa din siya because breast milk is not all super powerful, di ba? Minsan, there are viruses and germs that are more powerful than breast milk. But, mind you, and thank God, as in I'm very thankful to God, that all the times na nagkasakit si Cairo, he was never rushed to the hospital. Yung ubo tsaka si Punya, we are able to manage it at home. Sometimes we visit the pediatrician, but it never really happened na may extended time siya na kailangan niya mag-antibiotic for ilan, ilang weeks, ilang weeks, ganun. No, he doesn't need that. And I truly, truly believe that it is because of breastfeeding. Unlike... I'm not throwing shades at anyone, but unlike formula-fed babies, I know formula-fed babies who have gone to the hospital twice, even before their first birthday, because nagkaroon ng malalang case of a fever or something like that. And I'm I'm just very grateful na I chose to breastfeed. And sana tuloy-tuloy hanggang sa paglaki ni Cairo na he will never be rushed to the hospital because breastfeeding, breast milk, strengthens the immune system of our children. So... I hope and pray to God that it will continue to be like that. And I hope that you will also decide to breastfeed because it's really extremely beneficial and makakatipid pa tayo sa hospital bills. Number eight on my list is that you will need all the support that you can find. Ako, I am very thankful because my family, both ha, biological and my in-laws, they are all very supportive of my decision. I know they have expressed the the desire or parang they have expressed um, a couple of times already na um, Cairo should be formula fed or maybe it is time for him to formula 
to be formula fed kasi right now he's already 20 months old pero whenever i express my decision then i still want to continue hindi nila ako pinipilit and that's very important kasi imagine if i am living with my family that every day ako sinasabi na oh formula mo na yan formula mo na yan diba that's very that's very difficult. So, I'm very happy that they respect my decision. Pero, of course, hindi naman din ako forever breastfeed. So, I'm also hearing them out that it is more convenient, it will be more, it will be easier for me, it will be easier for them to take care of Cairo. Diba, mas naiiwan ko si Cairo with them if Cairo is already formula fed. Or, okay naman din hindi mag formula. But something like, kapag hindi na siya tumedede, then it will be easier for them to take care of, of Cairo. So, that's also one thing I'm considering. But overall, looking back lang talaga, I'm just very thankful that they were very supportive when I I, I decided to breastfeed. Kahit ano yung mga kinalangan kung bilhin, kinalangan kung gawin, nagpump ako, nag-sterilize ako sa bahay nila, ganyan, ganyan. Sinabi ko kay mama, kailangan ko ilagay sa ref, kailangan ko ilagay sa freezer. They were very supportive of everything that I did para ma-breastfeed ko si Cairo. In fact, they were very helpful when I had to look for a breast milk donor. As in, full force, full effort talaga silang lahat. So, yun. I'm very so I'm very happy that I got the support system I need. And that is something that you should always keep in mind. That if you will be breastfeeding, you need a very, very good support system. And number nine thing on my list that I wish I knew before I started breastfeeding is that there is so much support out there na hindi mo lang alam. Ako, I didn't know this. I did not know this and I wish I knew this. Meron palang mommy online support groups. And I did not know that. If I knew that, then I would have known about breastfeeding in Cebu, breast milk donors in Cebu, yung mga hospital policies about breastfeeding in Cebu. Kasi hindi ko alam yun eh. Alam ko yung... I, did, I don't know why I was reading blogs about the US, about Manila, but I wasn't particularly looking for support groups based in Cebu. So hindi ko alam yung mga policies sa mga specific hospitals in Cebu. And it would have been better if prepared ako. It would have been better if when I went to the hospital, may dala-dala akong donated breast milk. Something like that. Hindi ako prepared. So, I didn't know that there are support groups out there. Kapag, for example, your family has no idea about breastfeeding. If, for example, your family is not supportive of breastfeeding, then go online, look for a mom community, because mahahanap mo sila for sure. Eh. Madame, madame, I'm telling you, just comment below if wala kayong mahanap, and I'm gonna lead you to the right direction. And then, so many moms are very supportive kahit online lang. They will help you, they will tell you things you didn't know, they will lead you to mga just contact this person, just go to this group, just go to... May mga meetups pa nga. So, look for all the support you can find. That's the previous um, th thing that I said na kailangan mo when you decide to breastfeed. And number nine is there, uh, there is so much support out there. And online is definitely where you can find most of that support. And number ten, the last on my list, about something that I wish I knew before I started breastfeeding is knowledge is power. Knowledge is power talaga mga moms. Iniisip kasi natin, ah, nakaya nga ni Lola, ni, ni Lola, ni, Lola ni Lola, nakaya nga nila before, wala namang internet, wala naman, hindi naman sila nurse. And ako, I'm a nurse, ha? But, knowledge is power. You have to do enough research talaga. It's not true na parang isalalay mo na lang sa kung anong alam mo. Because, Hindi siya madali when your when your baby is crying the whole night and hindi mo alam what's wrong what's wrong ba nung ginagawa ko and then later on you will know because of research that it is because of something you ate ikaw as a mama may nakain ka pala nagchange yung milk mo tapos ayaw ni baby N nangyari sa amin yun when i when i tried drinking coconut coconut water, as in yung tubig galing sa buko. Tapos uminom ako ng isa talagang buko, uh, that night, iyak ng iyak si baby. So, nag-change pala yung quality ng milk ko. Kasi the next day, hindi na ako uminom ng buko. Okay na, okay na kami for ilang days. Uminom ulit ako ng buko. Ganun na naman siya, iyak na naman siya ng iyak. So, therefore, meron palang mga food na ayaw ni baby. Parang nag-change yung milk ko, ayaw na ni baby um, sa milk ko kapag yun nga, uminom ako ng buko. So, there are so many things that you have to know then about breastfeeding. 
But you don't have to worry. You don't have to think na, oh my God, kailangan ko pala mag-aral. Hindi naman. Kasi like I said, there are support groups online. And you you can just research. You can just ask, hi mga mummies, anong kailangan kong malaman about this? Or when it is already happening, it is, as long as may data ka, may wifi ka, chat mo lang yung mga mummies. Hi mummies, ganito yung nangyari sa akin. Uh, tulungan nyo naman ako, bakit naging ganito si baby? About, about maintaining milk supply, about baka suddenly ayaw na ni baby maglatch, baka suddenly wala ka ng milk. So, just ask moms because knowledge is power talaga. And as I have said, there are so many support groups out there and there might be somebody who can support you kahit hindi mo family like a lactation consultant, a breastfeeding advocate, pediatrician, mga breastfeeding, uh, anong tawag nun? Peer counselors. May mga ganun in different cities. So, just find out about them or look for your mom tribe. Mag-breastfeeding meet up kayo. And then, just ask always because knowledge is power talaga when it comes to breastfeeding. Especially us, na wala tayong... Um, madami kasi sa atin, we don't live with our families anymore. We don't live with our moms. We don't live with our lolas. So, sinong tatanungin natin, right? So, try to research. Google is free. Basta may, may internet kayo, Google is free, Facebook is free, Instagram is free. Just look and follow for those moms talking about breastfeeding and don't be afraid to ask. So that's it. Those are the 10 things I wish I knew. 10 things nobody told me about breastfeeding. 10 things nobody warned me about breastfeeding. Basta do, those are the 10 things I am sharing with you about breastfeeding. And I hope that madami kayong natutunan from me. If you have questions, especially kasi may mga na-mention ako na baka hindi niyo masyadong na-gets. Kasi the video is already very long. 30 minutes na yung video. Ito try ko pang maging maiksi lang siya na video. So just ask me in the comments below. Also, I reply on Instagram and on Facebook. But mas active ako sa Instagram ha. So just send me a message on Instagram. I'll flash, I'll flash my socials on the screen. It's mostly just how to mommy. The same spelling lang naman yung lahat. So just let me know if you want to know more or you want to ask me more things about breastfeeding. And thank you very much for watching. If you're still watching up to this point of the video, please subscribe and comment below if you like this video. Thank you!